<sighs> so everyone is no two people are not seen. <laughs> At least you can see yellow. No, three are not seen. Oh yeah. One, two, three. We are hiding, hiding well. <laughs> Probably we can turn the whole station so that it will cover the quest. But then screen-wise, you could get a lot of glare in Zach's area because oh, of, of the angle. Of course, angle. you'll find uh, arguments in support <laughs> of <your> convenience. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, we will be kicked out of here by 7 or even 10 minutes before, so we don't have much time. And when... No, Jack. So, if you do have specific questions related to your presentations, uh, Raise hands, stop and uh, rush to get answers. If you do not have immediate questions of high urgency, I will go at slow pace in whatever is pleasant for me, but your questions are priority. Oh. What are we doing? So we all agreed to, to do uh, presentations where you share practical skills of using software uh, as, as a tool to communicate the skills to each other and, and uh, mastering them. And um, we have covered some of them and some of them need a little bit of um, complement. So our time from over five, ten, two, six fifty. Can be partitioned between going through the list or yes, going through the list. And as soon as uh, we finish finish the list, and everyone will be happy about, I can slowly introduce a new piece of software that uh, we will be doing after. I don't know if it is a very good idea because you need to concentrate on your presentations, but semester is so short that I may need to start uh, something. At the end of our meeting, I will switch the gear and start uh, speaking about completely different software, completely different subject, just as an introduction so that you get prepared to our next meeting and then we will get go quicker. So list of available electronic structure methods. I hope Brendan will be able to uh, to go through it, but just in case One is expected to uh, to be able briefly tell what uh, Levi was informally telling to Sam, going through the um, everything that can replace hard to fork, like mechanical, semi-empirical, DFT, and what, what they mean to your understanding by today, and declare that um, the further down to the list you go, the higher is the precision and smaller are the models that you can compute in a reasonable time. It's basically a summary of the uh, first first question. Um, Faisal, um, what you plan to do is a very useful and helpful thing that will dedicate all of us. By now, uh, he is ahead of probably everyone in the audience about the subject, but uh, do not forget to cover the screenshot of possible um, choices of the basic set that are available in uh, this GhostView software. So that is screenshot? Yes, yes. And uh, cover a little bit more of practical side. 
like uh, what are your expectations or if you, if you have time which I doubt maybe take some simple job and compute it with different base sets and see what what is the difference or maybe without computing just tell by your own words whatever is available so list of tasks available Tell a little bit more of uh, what each of them are, and uh, we have made only first two. But wh what are the rest? Which kind of data do they provide? Uh, and uh, feel free to either practice something yourself or to go to Gaussian web website. Um, we can survive with only the first two of them, but the the rest of them are also important, like uh, scan is for scanning different points on the reaction coordinate, the frequency is normal mode and how this which is needed for infrared spectroscopy, and uh, the output file will contain frequencies that pop up on the infrared experiment. Okay. Jabot, who is absent. So we have covered in the class the first two lines of his task, right? So we know that we can uh, prepare an input file. either by converting either by converting the file with coordinates <coughs> into Gaussian input format or directly reading it in Gaussian and then we do have two ways first to process the input file with uh, the Gauss view software and click on the right buttons, or wrong buttons, and then click Submit. Or we can completely edit the input file in the command line. And then in the command line, the header of the um, file is contains most important thing. So if we look here, you can see that there is about half dozen lines with some uh, codes that first to show the uh, parallelization over different processors to speed up. And uh, if you go in the supercomputers of the national facilities, you can use like thousands of processors and to substantially quicker than the uh, amount of memory allocated and then um, the intermediate file which is needed for saving restarting job further if jobs are very long and um, angry system administrator stops the job or there is a power outage or you just want to tailor your efforts in every way save intermediate levels and then restart from there uh, and also it is a file that contains some auxiliary information and then there is the uh, list of tasks that you request from the software which we typically were doing by clicking method, basis set, uh, type of calculation and uh, <coughs> previously we were trying like force field optimize or uh, heart rate fog and um, when to dizzy it is what we do and this this relief it goes to the density functional theory specifying specific functional the 
person who will present on different methods. Who is this? Sam? Sam? Not, not Sam. Brendan? Yes. Yeah. Number one. Uh, if you select uh, so-called DFT method, then uh, there will be an option to select different uh, functionals. And uh, here, instead of telling DFT, you just tell type of functional. And then one can uh, tell self self consistent uh, optimization or infrared or whatever one needs. And then there is one important line that we didn't cover completely and I am absolutely sure that Zach and Seth critically need for their research. So the numbers here are typically, in, if you look in the files that you were doing in your homeworks, were always 0 and 1. Okay. Right? But if you do if you do this transition metal complexes, often your ground state is not a singlet. And sometimes <coughs> if you do chemistry, you deal with non-neutral species. So the first number uh, tells deviation from neutrality. Is it neutral, anion or cation? And uh, second number tells about spin multiplicity which is 1 for singlet, 2 for doublet, 3 for triplet, and, and so forth. So if uh, your model is an open shell, if it is a radical or transition metal complex, it can be like... I, I do not speak too much this language, but uh, quartet. Right? <coughs> so, and if you do it with Gauss, you, it will... Um, offer you more most reasonable numbers here but uh, sometimes you need to go a little away from these prompts and modify it the letter u here stands for unrestricted which means that um, number of electrons with spin projections up and down can be different and this little, very little knowledge on how to uh, tailor the input uh, files is helpful if you create a geometry, but then you start different uh, to investigate different configurations. Make sense? Oh, I'm speaking instead of Java. So we were doing. <coughs> number first and uh, line one and two and what are spin and multiplicity well, spin multiplicity and is not needed here so this is um, charge charge and multiplicity those are two two integer numbers which are critical in it. okay and then uh, we do run Gaussian or if we uh, derive different clusters with different queuing systems and sometimes this command to submit the job to a calculation is, is uh, a little different but it is uh, five seconds to learn it from whoever uses this machine like queue sub and submit they, they change from machine to machine but there are several standards so on the machine where we work in it is just run Gaussian with uh, number of processors and input form <coughs> So next question is by Tivan, how to analyze uh, output file. And if you are bored to listen to me and want to do something practical, please navigate to this directory, borrow the input file.com, transfer it to your directory and run it. Or if you are super bored and you don't have enough energy, you can copy output file too. <laughs> <laughs> We we are not uh, challenging the cluster for calculations. Uh, we are um, 
learning the formats right now. So uh, if I'm telling something not very exciting, just copy and run. And we will uh, look a little bit on this model, which is, which is plus titanium. Remember before, titanium is the simplest, one of the simplest transition metals. Um, you can do it once again. <laughs> were, you, were you given a sign that I'm wrong and titanium should be 4 plus? No. No, he was oh. Okay, I interpreted that you tell me uh, it should be 4 plus, not 3 plus. No. So, um, in whatever we were doing before, we took titanium models because uh, it is one of the simplest transition metals, just next to what is before? Vanadium was. Titanium is second among transition metals, right? Mm -hmm. This is second And first one? Vanadium. Uh, vanadium is a little crazy in chemistry. Oh, I've heard that it may appear like at any rainbow colors depending on different oxidation states, right? I lied. Scandium. Vanadium is three. Okay, three. Good. Yeah. Scandium. <laughs> but titanium is, is more earth abundant than those. And so we were dealing with uh, four plus. We were. Before. Mm -hmm in computation. But sometimes it may appear in 3 plus. If you want to stabilize it in 3 plus, we can add uh, 3 anions. And because it likes to be octahedrally coordinated, we can add a couple of waters. So these complex, I don't know how practical it is, it is just a toy for a um, little exercise. <coughs> Probably in, in real life chlorines will go away and it will be coordinated to waters only, but this is a small model. So uh, it <coughs> is neutral, total charge is zero. Three plus plus three times minus equals zero. But if we remove an electron from um, Titanium, then it will be, before we had highest occupied orbital filled with two electrons. And now we remove one and we get an open shell model that needs a specific treatment. Uh, the uh, treatment that needs letter U in front of your method, like UHF for unrestricted heart reform, or UB3 loop, or whatever whatever you do, for uneven, uh, for um, uneven, open shell, odd number of, uh, of electrons. <coughs> and uh, here is, before when we were scrolling through the output file, we scroll as our questions allow, and then we find the record alpha occupied and alpha virtual, right? And then, um, who? Tion, right? Um, and then whoever presents this method will tell that here is the highest occupied, here is the lowest unoccupied, and the energy offset between them is the gap for the for the material for the molecule good but here we it's not the end of the story look here what, what you observe <coughs> look, look at the file alpha occupied alpha virtual go further bing, 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 bing. so beta occupied beta virtual so the Electrons with different projections of spin, up and down, alpha and beta, form different electronic structures. 
they have they may have different number for homo and homo and they may have very different gaps so it is what you need if you do this transition metal complexes and then one needs to report two day two gaps one gap for alpha another gap for uh, beta and you know where, where to look at it. yes well that's why I cannot get the one that I did one of the chapters mm -hmm. so one needs to put if, if one changes the input file manually one needs to add whether u in front of the method like uhf unrestricted heart of fog and then it, this will come up automatically um, extracting without goes u total energy total energy it is a trick from uh, Jabot. just do grab for scf grab scf and for um, ionization and affinity according to Koopman's theorem you just look for um, energies of uh, homo and luma what do you do if, if there are alpha and beta? <coughs> you probably take highest of uh, homos and lowest of lumos right? and just to be uh, confident and sure you uh, report the second one in brackets um. okay so grab SCF and um, the energies for this um, alpha and beta orbitals are given in atomic units which are out of zone of uh, comfort zone for many people so it is good practice to convert them into say electron volts by multiplying by 27 or different conversion factors for other popular units so grab SCF and the name of the output file gives the total energy right so we are done with this subject symmetry groups We'll skip symmetry groups and give uh, Zach an opportunity to <laughs> surprise us tomorrow. I, I did have one question, okay, uh, which has to do with the tolerance. The larger the tolerance, the quicker is calculation. But what does the value mean? Because I found if I increase my tolerance, mm -hmm. the number of allowed higher order symmetry groups goes up. Yes, um, intuitively, non-rigorous, it's um, delta between deviations of, of angles. Like if you, ah. if you go from one configuration to other by rotations, you can allow plus minus like one degree or plus minus 10 degrees. Mm -hmm. And if you allow too much of the uh, error, then rotations by several angles can bring to the same configuration. Make sense? Yes. Good. So we will learn from you tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> good, good, good. But uh, please try to uh, to be within three minutes. <laughs> if po well, I know it is not possible, but we need, as a group, we need to complete in uh, <clears throat> one hour and twenty minutes. Yeah, yeah. So the screen just will go black. Is there still a queue list for running jobs? Right oh, it's cute. probably, but you, you sh no about running jobs. Please submit jobs immediately. Do not wait until the list is uh, empty, because other people will not wait. 
Він це вміє за Дейві, він до кім. You can also maybe try to uh, show BF. Okay. Well, I submitted it earlier today. It's not done. I don't know if it's because I exited or something. No, if if you submit it to the queue, it should run until it dies or it runs out of wall time. But I, I sent it again. So. Mm. It didn't work. No. No. Uh. Uh, see what I, what I did? Um, here is the trick that will help only to one person in the group. But you can be this one person. If you type Q login, there, there is a... and then type the password, there is a one or two reserved nodes that are st staying away from Q. And if you type Q login, they are at your disposal without any weight. <laughs> that is a dirty, well, a secret. <laughs> VIP access. Huh? The VIP access. Yes, VIP access, but we do not have special password. It is VIP expert, um, access for everyone. So um, the only disadvantage that you cannot run 20 jobs in it. It is like we all should understand it. Maybe some of us need a uh, quick turnaround, like 10 seconds job, and we cannot wait a week until others complete stuff. Quick question. Yes. Um, how do you tell Gaussian that it's not a singlet? So Gaussian says O2 is a singlet, right? O2 is a triplet. You just modify it in the. You have to modify it in the file. Yes. 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 You you need to no, modify it in the file. You can. I think you can do it in Gaussian. If you go, you know where the energy is. Yeah. The next one over your methods. Like the third line down, it can. I think you can say what it is. Do you have Gaussian open? Yeah. yeah. So if you go to methods, method. spin. Yeah. Oh, okay. Change triplets. Okay. So here uh, you can change charge and multiplicity by saying whatever you need. Okay. And if you change your charge, your options will change. For not any charge. So not, not all combinations of uh, charge and uh, spin are allowed. Like, um, and it is it is not general. It is specific for the for your system. Like this system is neutral, but it has odd number of electrons. So for uh, it it has missing singlet. If we uh, change its charge, then it should. Oh, yeah. yeah. Then it will allow singlet and triplet. That'd be if it was titanium four plus. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, but I do not need to run it, and I'm exiting from this VAP mode. Beat me. Raw scripts to extract density of states out of log files. So the oh. I was suggesting use terribly large, huge fonts because uh, if you, I was looking on the recordings, and uh, even with uh, good equipment that we have in the recording, it gets um, like this recording will be like a black line. This will be, capital letters will be seen, lowercase will not be seen. We will be like block, nothing. So use like font number 30, so that it will fit maybe seven lines per, per the whole screen. And f especially for those who will sit on the black uh, back row, you probably will uh, appreciate this. So if it is a couple of more slides, it's okay. And do not spell everything that you want to speak on the on the screen. You can put the main points and then speak out whatever need to be delivered. If you fear to forget, you can add notes and then go into presenter modes and look on your little uh, cheat sheet. But I have already put everything. <laughs> huh? I have already put everything on the slides. That, that's good. That's good for your education record. But uh, we we need to give everyone an opportunity to speak 
and we need to vacate in uh, sh short time. So we, like, if you do six minutes instead of three, it's fine. If you do nine minutes instead of three, <laughs> it is fine. But if you do like half an hour, then you uh, step on the feet of some of someone else. So uh, the list of energies of orbitals is good when we play with small molecules, when there are few orbitals. But if there are hundreds and thousands, one needs some um, unified way to treat them. And there are pre-defined script, scripts that extract energy from the Gaussian output file and convert them into so-called density of states, which the definition is number of orbitals per unit energy, per interval of energy. So what if we, if we have spin unrestricted calculation? Then the scripts are changed a little bit because we have two sets of uh, orbitals and um, I am planning to practice it right now really quickly for this uh, model that is predominantly open shell. If you have prepared everything and you are busy, it's not critically needed to add, but I want to cover it at least in the lab. So it is optional for you to, to, to speak about it, but I want to cover it because some of us may need it for practical research. Um, so the little manual is included in the prompt file. Those go spin because uh, we cannot count that our memory serves uh, well every time. And then um, the script should be run twice. So there are two scripts one for alpha, another for beta. For those of us who enjoy programming, it's just the two copies of the same script with uh, parsing different keyword alpha or beta. Why don't you just make it one script? You can do it. You have time. <laughs> and uh, if you share it with the uh, group, it will be appreciated. I would probably just make a bash script that caused both of those scripts. <laughs> ah, here, here is optimization. So you run one. Observe that uh, there are additional additional uh, files, and the parameters here are the same as for for the singlet: number of grid points, the energy offset between grid points, and the um, how many below homo and how many above humo. Lumo. So the here, here is a little legend explanation. Uh, what, what are they? And uh, upon running uh, these two scripts, there will be uh, two sets of files. And the density of states will be automatically generated in the files DOS alpha and DOS beta. But since we want to convert, well, if you like origin or X 
Excel. Excel? You just take these uh, files, download them, and uh, plot with your favorite program. But uh, there is an option to convert them into graphical files through GNU plot. plot. Thank you. And here we do have an borderline overlap between subject by Whitney and subject by Ari. So uh, if we do have these files, we may want to um, convert them into unified names. So whatever system you do, which whatever directory you are, you rename or copy the long name with all specifications with more generic dos alpha dos beta and then you run the script that converts this uh, sets of data columns into graphical file if you are curious what is inside you see it is nothing but plotting these two files uh, together and um, if you look into the files that were created there is a file with ex uh, extension ps which is ancient so you may want to convert convert this file to pdf and then upon we do have this conversion one may want to bring this file to the local computer And then you see the visualization of the. Um, please do not hesitate to, to, to follow the steps and do them uh, for yourself. I will not uh, design homeworks or track it, but you may find it useful for your uh, personal research. So before we used to have density of states that looks only as upper part. And uh, for this um, transition metal complexes, we expect occupied orbitals uh, with localized on the ligands and unoccupied orbitals localized on the transition metals. So typically, well, sometimes it changes, but uh, those could be D orbitals. But here we remove. Um, one of the electrons from occupied ligand orbital make it unoccupied therefore there is a change in structure and the image of the density of states becomes unsymmetric if you do unrestricted calculation for singlet for the model with even number of electrons it will look mirror symmetric same for alpha and same for beta but as soon as you go for away from singlet it starts being different and uh, who needs it those who deal with open shell or radical and those who deal with uh, magnetic materials so magnetism is, ba is uh, in simple language is a difference in number of alpha and beta electrons so it will be magnetic materials Some people make transition metal magnetic doping in quantum dots. Dilute magnetic semiconductors. Example dos. And now we have a spin density of states. Spin density of states. Any questions? Because this is a little novel. Or objections. Do you think you will be able to uh, do it later if you need it for your research. 
So it's you know where to take the instructions in this little uh, prompt file. That's in the bin, right? Yes, yes. Molecular orbitals. What are they? Definition. Linear combination of atomic orbitals. Yes. The good. <laughs> And they, they are introduced in uh, hartree fock theory and then used in some uh, few other theories, but uh, they are intuitively helpful, although it is a doubtful question if they can be observed in real life. I just want to be careful and not say something that is not 100% uh, supported. By, by experiment, but they, they really correlate with observables, and one can use picture of uh, transitions from of electron from one orbital to another one as a, as a very good analysis. So, um, when we run Gaussian job, there is a formation of dot chk file, which helps to restart and contains intermediate information, as well as information about all orbitals and something else. In order to help uh, reading, one needs to convert uh, the dot uh, .chk into dot .fchk just by format of the of the code, and it is it has been it is done by the command form check. Right? As soon as you as you have it, you apply the Apply. Give me a second. I want to copy paste the image and put it into PowerPoint as if I would uh, present tomorrow. Print screen. Paint. Control C. Go to PowerPoint. this image into the presentation. It is so three minutes for preparing three minutes presentation. <laughs> oh do not listen for me. Spend three hours. <laughs> okay. Um orbitals, orbitals. If we let me take top, otherwise it could be too late. We make auto log out. So um, if <coughs> I'm going to Google and type cube gen, cube gen, it will surprise me with tons of manual information. So how to convert the form check file into the files that can be plotted. And one can spend days of reading it. <laughs> <laughs> but we need very few, very few examples. So by scrolling through one can see that one can select different molecular orbitals, one can type homo and lumo, and one can do different uh, density of states, but we different uh, density of grid points. But what we need here, uh, before we were using MO equal number of orbital that we uh, extract from the dot log file. Here is a little addition. AMO and BMO. It is what one needs to do if we deal with Spin specific uh, is unrestricted. So, since I do not trust my memory,
No, I, I can trust. It's not just as complicated. So I, I'm typing cube gen. Then I type the letter O for orbitals. Then I'm typing before in our previous life or two weeks ago in this lab, we were typing MO equals number something. Now, if you have alpha and beta, we type AMO equals, let's say, 31. The homo and lumo for alpha and beta are 31 and 32 for this specific model. And then... And you, you just put homo in there? Yeah. Yes. Okay. But uh, sometimes you need more than... Homo and lumo are different for alpha and beta. And sometimes uh, for your practical research, you may need more than homo and lumo. Like you can separate it by com uh, commas. Okay. Uh, so that you can say homo, comma, lumo, and then it generates both in one cube. Oh, that's so much easier. <laughs> but it's hard to visualize in JMOL that way. Hey, JMOL is the bomb. And then you type um, reasonable file name and call it Q. So same as we did before with just letter A for um, alpha and letter B for beta. And then um, we can explore different options to draw them, but one of the quickest, if you do have um, Ghost U, we can open this BMO. And put it. So if uh, what uh, clear right, just one letter more. If you do want to get a little more of physical insight, you can draw several hmm. orbitals and just uh, merge together into one picture to have it uh, more uh, representative. Otherwise, if you tell figure one, orbital one, and then do 50 figures, it is a little boring. And if, if they have uh, just little character, then uh, either on one eye or another one doesn't need to do too much of them. So on one, the homo is localized to the metal. Yes. The other, yes. the homo is localized to the right. ligands. Right. Okay. Uh, if it will be four plus, the homo would be on, on ligands. Since we did a three plus, we have this uh, empty orbital, uh, not empty, field orbital on the titanium. So we fill one uh, titanium orbital with an electron. And it appears uh, inside the gap. Um, orbitals far from Homo Lumo region look more or less like mirror reflection, but uh, those in the middle of the gap are per perturbed. How to plot orbitals for open shell configurations? Done. Um, some people of the old school, well, we do not uh, have so many people of old school uh, here, maybe uh, on the Dr. Dr. Morris and Dr. Budjak. <laughs> <laughs> but um, m s many people were developed at the time when there were no, there was a little of quantum chemistry, but there were no tools to render images. And uh, sometimes they argue and they, um, I'm not 
talking about our colleagues here, but I had it in my experience like 10 years ago at different institution. So that old school people refuse to analyze images of orbitals. They start telling, I don't understand what, what you're telling. Tell me in a chemical language, like bond order, or give me a definition, what are those blobs? So, um, the one electron, molecular orbital, is defined at each point of space. And these cube files are corresponding to the corresponding to splitting of all space around the molecule onto very small three-dimensional cells, as, as we did in uh, our lecture for Thomas Fermi. And then it tells how many percentage of the electron is in this cell, in this cell. But if we plot every of the cell, we will see nothing, because they will block the vision. And the, for, for us right now, it looks natural and simple, but if you want to be a little bit more rigorous, we may provide a concept of so-called isosurfaces. It's basically what we do. Ninety percent of people would understand you without this concept and without this uh, unnecessary rigorosity. But formally, suppose we have one dimensional function. There is x and there is f. Suppose that we are one dimensional people. Which means here is a one dimensional I of one dimensional people, person. <laughs> and this I can see either yes or no, one point. So of all function, we can see either it is above some threshold or below some threshold. Right? And uh, if you can, if this one-dimensional person can look from different sides, um, this function can be identified only as a size of, of this function between these uh, critical points. So we can identify at which point x1, x2, at which point the, uh, our function is equal to isovalue. So we, s we specify an isovalue and uh, then we get two points out of complicated function. Well, maybe more than two, but much less than infinity. If we select this isovalue a little bigger, then the size of the function will be smaller. If you select this threshold lower, then the size of the function will be bigger. So projecting the same idea for three-dimensional sets of data, we select only those uh, surfaces where our function from molecular orbital, real part of x, y, and z, equals a specific isovalue. So then we have projection uh, from three-dimensional to from three-dimensional cloud to two-dimensional surface. And the orbitals that we are plotting are those isosurfaces. Most of people will understand you, but if you tell to like advanced mathematician who never saw these orbitals, you may you may need to add this definition, or you may to impress your reader in, in the paper by like not just my orbitals, but my eyes of surfaces. Um, what is next?
let's uh, give Levi a chance to surprise us yeah. with his presentation tomorrow. Why? Because it is. Uh, otherwise, there will be no free. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so my presentation is not that bad. Is that what you're saying? It's good. Okay. Let's see. Let's make a. If you have doubts in quality of your presentation, we can set up a quiz based on the material you present, and then if uh, the grades are low enough, you will be guilty. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but uh, if one adds together all, or if one takes absolute value square, add all orbitals together, it will be total density. And one can plot it also. Any questions regarding tomorrow's presentations? No. So I'm just introducing the concept of isosurfaces, and he's going to go into the in-depth part, right? You cover as much as you can about orbitals. OK. Well, I'm doing Mulekin, right? Yes, and Mulekin charge uh, distribution. So it is a projection of this total charge density on the vicinity of each ion, and telling how much charge is around specific ion. And then one can numerically check that, for example, this titanium is 3 plus or maybe 3.1 plus or 2.9 plus. Yeah. You, can, you can't get accurate numbers. Then you may explain why. Okay, so in our group talks, we've we talked about it a bit, but is it the effective shielding of the nuclei? It is uh, choice of orbitals and, and, and de definitions. Okay. It's, it's not physical. So we don't have a complete basis. It won't ever. Okay. Yes. Mm. So, uh, what are we doing now? Let, let me ask once again if everyone is happy about presentations. Um, so, the philosophy is the idea of presentations that uh, sooner or later, voluntarily or involuntarily, we will do research. I do not, and you do not care about the course. You care about your big life for, for, for research when some of the skills can be needed. And the idea is that if a presenter shares his or her um, success and favors, it will help others to be more fluent in the research process. So uh, look from uh, your perspective, like how much do you need these orbitals being plotted for analysis of metal organic complexes? What can you learn from them? And is this this way of plotting them is sufficient? So do you may have different and maybe better angle on the problem than, for example, I do. Do not hesitate to stop me and uh, ask questions related to the presentations. Please submit your PowerPoint slides before the midnight. And uh, it's not uh, my uh, frivolous uh, wish. It is needed for pack them together into one file, print and distribute. Um, now. If you are worrying about worrying about your presentation, you can just focus on it and close your ears with earplugs. But if you are curious about what we will be doing in the course and in the lab in a week from now, I will start slowly introducing new sub subjects. No one tells ready, but no one uh, also complains that uh, I'm not ready. <laughs> so I, I take benefit of the doubt for myself, assuming that everyone is ready. But uh, seriously, I will uh, come over this material once again. So I'm very touched if you sit and listen, but your primary task is tomorrow presentations. If they're not ready, you can uh, take your earplugs and prepare presentations. I, I don't do not mind. 
So. Chemistry of chemicals is good, but sometimes one needs to take chemistry of materials, which are not like molecules in the liquid phase. They can be solids, they can be gases, aerogels, uh, they can be different forms of matters, it can be interface between solid surface of catalyst and uh, liquid or gaseous precursor. What is uh, right? Fancy names for techniques. Molecular beam scattering. scattering. When one has gas and uh, solid, active uh, solid. So for such, there is a uh, range. Surface. Gas. Or it could be um, interface of, again, solid. So it and work with, with few molecules, or it can be maybe just piece nanostructure of uh, metal particle, semiconductor particle, no, no metal semiconductor, and maybe sometimes dielectric. So if we jump away from small molecules, we may need tools that are more adjusted for a broader range of materials. We may sacrifice a little of precision, which is treated really well in Gaussian, but uh, we may gain broader ability to describe broader range of materials at atomistic level. Do you buy this motivation? Um, so most challenging are solids because as uh, we have started in a class a, a week ago solids are periodic and the if you have repeating pattern of, of ions the electrons can freely or molecular orbitals, if you say electronic state, some distribution in space, can freely move from one unit cell to another with non-zero velocity or non-zero momentum. And this feature of electronic state being moving, having non-zero momentum, is completely absent in pure chemical systems. So it needs a piece of software that takes into account this feature. So it stands for the Yena uh, Initial Simulation Package. So it does have all or most of functionality of um, Gaussian for chemical systems, but in addition it is designed well to treat solids, interfaces, nanostructures, uh, liquid gases, um, whatever. So broader range of materials. The benefits were listed. But there, if one, start, one goes uh, to this piece of software, one faces immediate challenges. The main challenge, um, there are two main challenges. First, that as we have seen before, there are so many chemical data formats. So one can imagine that uh, each new piece of software has its own format of saving the data. So new format. Um, another challenge that stops many bright scientists from using the software is that in Gaussian, as we reviewed today, the input files
Input file contains all information about uh, computational resources, about method, basis set, about spin and multiplicity, about coordinates, all together. If we go to the new piece of software, then one needs four input files instead of one. So uh, we are starting slowly so that you do not get surprised too much when we get in, uh, more further in, into details. And um, some people can consider this very awkward and tell, okay, no, if, if there are four input files, I will, you will never use this piece of software, whatever benefits it gives. <laughs> it's four times worse than Gaussian. <laughs> and the names uh, of these uh, names and functional No, no, it is not what I planned. Here, media. Enter address at the top of the screen. Oh, code 4359. Let's do a quick experiment. Oh, maybe, maybe not right now, but it should be the um, way to broadcast wirelessly the image uh, from cell phone to, to the system. So it's uh, air media technology. And um, in some of the uh, laptops it, it is also available. This is how it's not on. So the code is 4359. It doesn't show up. Doesn't show up? Okay. What building is this? EML? Yes. Yeah, it's only EML 314 and 326. Okay, but we can practice it later. So, um, the input files are, I'm just a little, I'm lazy to write it again because I was writing it before. So the four files here are one, four, coordinates and the authors of this code are in Europe, in uh, Austria, with native language of German. I don't know how it is connected with uh, language, but they decided that all input and output files should have no extensions, but they should be all uppercase. There, there are many strange things, but uh, um, we can forgive them everything for high uh, productivity of this code. So, postcard is the file for positions. And I also have no idea what is the connection between car and positions. Postcard is uh, geometry. Then, uh, in car, it is not the car that drives <laughs> it, it is the input. So, the, it is a list of assignments, what we want to be computed, by which method and like energy, total energy, or optimization, or whatever. The K points is the file that needed to explain to the code about the momentum of this traveling electronic state. So this uh, file needed to explain the opportunity for overall electronic state to travel in space. And if we deal with purely chemical systems, but with this code, we will specify that zero moment, no tremor. So it's not, not, not a problem to have a limiting case. And the uh, pot car is for potentials. So since uh, we can, we may decide to deal with elements of all over the periodic table, one needs to specify uh, So there is a specific approximation that is uh, included into this code that 
if we are interested in chemistry and uh, optical properties and all, everything that happens, or maybe ionization, everything that happens in uh, regular life, like lasers, heating, uh, only electrons near the occupied and unoccupied orbitals are involved in chemistry. One doesn't care about core electrons that are like uh, that have energy minus uh, thousand volts minus kilo volt. We are not doing. If you are not interested in X-ray detectors, you don't care about core electrons. And if it is a uh, like gold ion, you don't care uh, to excite one S electron somewhere. Therefore, the core electrons are replaced by an average potential, similar to the potential in Hartley Fock that is created by these electrons. And this potential is stored for each element, uh, including the model, in the, in the file. So it is, um, if one does heavy elements in Gaussian, one also adds a fragment into dot com file, specifying this, this information, but one puts all food into one part. Here, one needs a little different uh, boxes for each type of uh, information. Specific for coordinates, specific for tasks, specific for traveling, and specific for potential. Make sense? Challenges, objections, not yet. Um, if one wants to convert files between different formats, we typically use Babel, right? And maybe recent versions of Babel already con made this conversion, but uh, it is a little more reliable to do it by hand uh, with more uh, versatility. So in order to create input file for the software, one should start with uh, .xyz file. So use Babel to create uh, .xyz file of the model that, that we need. And uh, there is a way to convert um, What does it mean? We should have about half an hour more. Okay. Not as not as bad as I as I feared. So we may convert um, the files uh, in uh, our previous format, like PDB or dot log into XYZ as a starting point. So I will be uh, taking maybe the simplest possible model. Titanium um, hydroxide. Thank you. 
So I am converting the uh, file into XYZ format and um, it is when we were dealing with um, Gaussian we didn't care how the input file for coordinates look like the order of elements was meaning nothing yes thank you so I, I type just Babel input Gaussian 09 log file output XYZ um, let's do a different name sort So, if you do, you see from the back row what is on the screen, or not, not much? No, no. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, this is the appropriate font for presentations. <laughs> <laughs> so you see that it has um, a little alternating order. Titanium, oxygen, hydrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, oxygen. For Gaussian doesn't care about it. The Austrian program would not agree on, on such uh, disorder. The order should be everywhere. <laughs> so what how do we restore order? So we do sorting. Sort, it's, one can do it in uh, Excel, but also the command line of uh, Linux does have it. So, first number in the XYZ format should be number of ions. Nine is good. One titanium, eight atoms for oxygen and hydrogen and then it is out of alphabetical order ordered <laughs> o -o -o -t -i. and then we do not need the rest so now we do have our uh, Cartesian file uh, in the XYZ format and it is ordered now there is a um, little homegrown code that um, would rotate this molecule around each any each of three axes if we do not have molecular visualization uh, tools then we, we still can place like donor and acceptor pairs at each distance and angle but here it is needed more for the format. So you type rotate XYZ and then answer three times zero for zero rotation. And then if, if we look into we do see that there, there are some new files appear. And after that there is one step more so uh, there is a uh, command that takes this rotated uh, postcard as input and creates the correct format, input format for VASP uh, code as an output with uh, three numbers as, as the argument. This is intellectual challenge num ranked number four in the whole course. Many people decline to use the software because of this challenge. Isn't this your uh, unit cell dimensions? No, 
but you are thinking in the right direction. Okay. So, we run this code, and then we do have so it doesn't uh, stop automatically. So by the nature of this code, it does consider anything that we treat as a periodic system, because it was originally designed for solids. So even if you have an isolated molecule, you can say, oh, it's unit, so it is a repeating unit. And then it takes it, it, it this poor uh, titanium hydroxide molecule and places it in a tight cage. So like um, there are in the store there are cageless uh, chicken. Here is a uncaged <laughs> chicken. So it, the cage is made smaller and smaller until uh, it fits it completely. So the smallest possible box that we make uh, without damaging the chicken. Can we do this? Is it possible or it is dangerous? It depends on what, what, what you model. And mm, it is always dangerous. It is uh, not allowed. Because the... I don't like molecules, I like chicken. <laughs> the tail of one chicken will overlap with the beak of, of another chicken and they will have too much of interaction energy basically it's, it will be like eating itself from, from the tail or if it is if you speak about molecules it means that we will create too high density that two atoms will be touching itself on zero distance. So if you, if you, immediately, if you will try to compute such a cell, then it will um, generate huge positive energy. It will explode if we allow it to move through. So it, it's something wrong. What should we do? There should be space between each pair of atoms. Even if they are uh, in relations in a chem chemical bond, there is a bond length. And if there is no bond, there should be big distance. At such big distance where they stop feeling each other. Which uh, can be like one nanometer. Or if we are non-rigorous, we can say it is half nanometer, but then it is like uh, dangerous. Especially while presenting it to people who know who is van der Waals. But we should, we, we don't have power to free the chicken with WASP software, but we can make the cage bigger. So that the, the review be larger distance between periodic replicas. Okay, um, and since it is a three-dimensional chicken or molecule, there should be distance to the next replica in uh, y and in uh, in z. So there should be three numbers that determine the of distance offset between the replicas. So the size of the molecule plus this offset will be the size of the cell. So we can put like uh, six, we can see seven. It. You cannot? Can you see now? So it was zero, zero, zero as a silly test, but now we replace it to, let's say, seven, 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 which are distance in angstroms. Then we hit enter, 
and we look other new files create yes we do see that there has been created file with name postcard right and we may look to look inside there's no extension on that yeah. there should not be yes okay um I can give you the names and email addresses of the authors of the code. <laughs> I'm okay with this. <laughs> Maybe they decided to be unique because all other software developers use extensions. Or the extension sometimes makes it difficult to email. So if there's no extension, it's just a text file. Yes. So, how do we read this file? You get your atoms, you get your cell, you get your number of atoms that corresponds with that, that count down, <laughs> and then the other positions, the T means if you move them or not. So T means you move or not? Yeah, so T, no, sorry, T means it's movable. I forget what it means. Is it F if it can't move? Well, it will be fixed. Fixed and T translatable. Okay. Um, you can say thermalized and frozen. <laughs> so, um, we can finish the session now or should I repeat what Levi told us? Huh? <laughs> I didn't really point, I just said. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, which elements are involved in building this model? O, T. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hydrogen, oxygen, titanium. Then this is scaling factor which we need if we will later decide to compress or do uh, of the model. Typically we keep it one. Now the size of the cell. After we took the height and uh, size of the, of, the, of the molecule and added this adjustment, it became 11 point something in, in each of the directions. And if the off diagonal elements are non zero, is it not? Then, then we are in troubles. Huh. And unless we are dealing with big uh, models of uh, truly periodic solids, we do not need them. So it needs for systems when uh, periodic cells have angles different from 90 degrees. If you do X-ray crystallography, you may see such uh, cells. If you don't, then you are a happy, happy person. Yeah. And one can represent any periodic crystal in the periodic in, with the unit cells with 90 degrees, but sometimes changing the angle will reduce the number of atoms in the unit cell, like the Graphene, one layer of graphite, with um, 60 and uh, 30 degrees cell, can be represented just by a unit cell with two atoms. I can show it to you. So, in, by, until the end of the course, we will keep only diagonal elements. Of diagonal elements and for crazy situations of crazy people. So, how many of each type are present? H, four times. O, four times. Stadium, one time. <coughs> Some keywords. And then we 
Well, forget about what is written in the row. Just focus on the number of uh, number of rows. So there are nine atoms. So you should expect one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. And <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so nine lines. Each line for one atom. Or if they are ionized, iron, nuclei, whatever. Center. Everyone is happy until now. Now for each nuclei, we have six records, three coordinates and three keywords, fixed or translatable or frozen or uh, thermalized. So this is X, this is a key for X. Right now we put T that every, uh, geometry can be optimized or molecular dynamics can be launched. But sometimes you may want to freeze part of your model, which you are confident about, like freeze the surface and allow molecular beam to to move. Then you can, for those, like, freeze titanium, which will be the, so here's the order. First four ions will be hydrogens. You see, there is no letter in front of them, as we usually saw in other formats. So first four will be hydrogens, next four will be oxygen, so last will be titanium. If you want to freeze titanium, you put here F, 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 for the record. <laughs> oh, do you like these numbers? Huh? Who likes these numbers? No. <laughs> no. What, what, what are they? Extras. Huh? So look, look, look more at the numerical values. Let me increase them a little bit. What? Is it in a reciprocal space? Why so many details of the road? No, no, they are in direct space. You see? It shows direct. That's terrible. Terrible, right? Unbelievable. Huh? Any, any guess what are those numbers? In which units? Atomic units? No, atomic units are just fac about factor 2 from angstrom. Nanometers? Maybe, but it will be strange. So this is another challenge for, for the software. So they want to make a universal format. And they have specific units of length for each model. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so the a unit of length is the size of the periodic box. So it starts from zero and ends with one. So one can consider it as percents. So it's like 41% from the bottom of the, of the cage in X direction. 65% from uh, the origin to the Y direction. 40% in Z. So where is the origin? The origin is lower right corner. Lower right, not lower left. Okay, lower, lower left. It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, low, 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 lower, yeah, lower left. Yes, lower left. So uh, how do? So it, it measures from <laughs> lower left. I can. Forty-one percent here. No, lower right. <laughs> Sixty. X Y. Yeah. Sixty-one percent here. And uh, therefore, if they want to describe it to someone, they call we use fractional coordinates. <laughs> fractional coordinates. But you shouldn't worry much because we do have a little script that does conversion from normal coordinates to fractional coordinates. And um, after the computation is complete, 
we there, there are scripts that convert it back into normal. So you should you shouldn't worry. It just uh, you pay again and again for this piece of software being really quick. It's like uh, using um, manual instead of automatic stick shift transmission. Those are nice. Uh, it depends. Some people do not share this opinion. But definitely, the, I, I can make a bet that developers of the software use uh, manual stick shift. <laughs> um, so, did I promise no homeworks? Yes. Yes. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, then our next meeting will be more loaded. But if, well, your primary task is to prepare presentations and send them within five hours to my email if you haven't done so. Uh, it will be your hour of glory tomorrow. But if you have too much energy on the weekend and you no homework, no homework, <laughs> just an opinion. If, um, if, you, if you want to invest your time in something interesting, try to convert each of the models that you have into this crazy format. Okay? Good. Uh, how do we do it? <coughs> But that's not homework, right? It's <laughs> not. It's not. <laughs> it's conditional. It's uh, no, conditional is a bad word. It's optional. It's optional. Free view opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Where is the camera? <laughs> hey, camera! We are finishing the meeting. Web number six seven is complete.